Hello, thank you for joining us. We're here in the New Life series, educational series with Dr. Michael Lyman. Hello, Rev Lightman. Hello, hello, Nitsa Mazos. We're talking about communications. We're welcome. You're welcome to join us. Today we're talking about the Internet revolution. The Internet is a whole world in itself, and we're going to have a few talks about it. But the first talk to open up this special subject about the Internet, we want to dedicate to the revolution of the Internet itself. When we prepared for this talk, we felt that we can divide our lives into two phases, the phase that was before without the Internet and the phase with Internet. And this transition from life to without Internet to with Internet, you can identify lots of new processes, phenomena that influences all of our lives each of us individually and all of society, even just looking out at uh, the entire human society. This uh, revolution that came into our lives and for a few years formatted our, reformatted our lives from scratch is very significant. And the point of this discussion with you is to see how through your integral approach you see this process of the internet revolution. But before we hear this, I would like Nitsa to open it up for us more, this subject of the Internet revolution. So first of all, this revolution caused us that in one click, the whole world opens up to us. We have access to everything, information, our ability to share, to greater connections between people, people who it actually crosses all borders. There's no borders. There's no distance, location. I can be accessible at any time. Uh, everything happens very quickly. If I used to have to wait for the newspaper to come to me in the morning, I click and I'm online all the time. I receive updated information, news flashes. I always know what's going on. My ability to receive information, everything's open. It's a complete world that's open to me. I just have to choose when I go in and then the type of information I'm snatching off the shelf. I'm much more active. I don't wait for information to come to me, fall on me. I choose what to take. The ability to share, my ability to write things, say I have an idea, I can share it with people on the Internet. If it interests a lot of people, in a minute I can become, go from being anonymous to being famous. Some is, uh, recognized uh, persona online. When we tried to set up this uh, talk, so many things came up that at first we said, let's look first of all at the inter let's look at the internet as a network because before the internet, the term network, we didn't even know what it was. So now we'll start with the first question from your perspective. How do you see this revolution of the internet? It really is a revolution. Humanity suddenly got into a network. There's no other word into a network that connects all of us, whether by choice or not by choice, at all different levels, invited, not invited, whether we like it or not, we're in it, we're all in the news, in everything. This is called the life of the network. I'm not talking about a network where there's like uh, activities where people have a niche where they're closed off and they don't care. I'm talking about a regular person if he goes into some place like news. At the end of the day, if he goes into two or three places, he knows what's happening. He can sniff sniff it out. And it's the spirit there. It doesn't matter what language, with translations, Wikipedia, Wikipedias and all that stuff. If he wants to research something, see something, it really made uh, our lives public not social, it's not social, but an, a more open life, if we want it. I can at the same time be more closed off, because if before to get some information I had to call a person in a special manner and go to the library and I had some special 
a group that I was attached to. Today I can remain anonymous, nobody knows me, and from my room, my closed off room, I can wander around the world on this network and know things and be connected to everyone in a one-sided manner. First of all, it's one-sided. So the network somehow disconnects me from connections with others because if before to be in contact, to know what's going on, let's say, I had to be in touch with humans in some manner. Today, in order to be to know what's going on, I don't have to be in contact with anyone. It's enough for me to have a, a computer, a modem, and nothing else. So let's put it like this. The ability to get out to the worldwide web also gives a person the ability to remain completely disconnected from everyone. And we see that lots of people from home, they're completely satisfied with that connection. They don't need anything. They go into all kinds of things. They scan the internet, right, left, up, down, all directions. He's interested in education, culture, science, porno, politics, and anal analysis. He can see everything and fill his time and not deal with anything on the one hand. On the other hand, the internet opens up the ability to connect and to connect in a direct manner, a genuine manner. And it doesn't have to be truthful. Nobody sees me. Nobody recognizes me. I can be... I can be like 70 years old, I can pretend I'm some young girl that's talking on the internet or some little boy, anything. Of course, I'm not talking in my name if I don't want to. I can also confuse people and I can be direct, even more direct than usual. Because if it's anonymous, then I can truly I can present myself in the most uh, revealing manner, apart from my name and who I am. But my entire world view, my opinions, the internet it's, of course, a network connecting people that want to connect. There's a lot of garbage there, a lot of lying. All of man's inclinations are there because it's so free and easy and accessible. So there it really spills out all the evil of humanity. And I think it's good because we're learning that through revela revelation of evil, a person comes to good. We need a lot of bad to grasp that we are bad, that we're dirty that this dirt is hiding uh, horizons to such an extent that we can't see anything around us. Everyone is in a, a hole of garbage that we've gathered around us. So I think that to the extent that it's worse, it's good that, it, that it'll be bad uh, virtually and rather than in the streets physically. And that will quickly, relatively quickly, maybe in dozens of years at the most, we will reach a state where, where people have had enough and we will begin to uh, 
We will begin to clean our, cleanse ourselves of all this garbage that there is there. I think it's time, and soon even the young people who are always renewing things, and each and every age opens up things from new, and they get to this uh, teenager age, and it'll be there there until, but everyone else above that age, in a normal, serious way, it'll be standard. Today it's because it's still new and, and there's so many options there. So people are still, it's as if it hasn't been, we haven't absorbed it properly, that we're in there, so what? So still, the use of it is, is overdone. I understand that there needs to be room there for adventure, for young people, especially that age 18, 20, 12, 13, 10, but not beyond 10 to 20. All the rest, I think they, I think they'll start coming down soon. They'll get like a, a calmer approach. This network developed because the entire world is attracted to be connected according to us being on the verge of entering the integral world. Therefore, all the concepts of communications, they've they become so developed in our time because it's in our nature. In our nature, we have this feeling of being, of having the ability to connect to the entire world, not to actually connect, but the ability to connect to the entire world. And in this manner, I'm anchored behind the screen. I'm protected behind the screen. This attracts me. Because I feel more and more that the world is round. So all the media are becoming, uh, since the internet, they're becoming more uh, general and global. We see that newspapers are going there and TV is going there. And there might be a little bit left, but I'm not disregarding printed material, uh, special niches on TV, home TV, but of course the future is heading towards all the media and all the communication between people, even on phones and cell phones and various networks. It will all be actually one single network. It will be on a tiny device or a big device. It'll be like on a computer. I think we won't even have computers. It'll be something that everywhere, maybe a little matchbox. I can have a screen in front of me in the air and have a, a keyboard and everything in front of me and a screen. And just that little matchbox will bring up this virtual machine in front of me. I don't think we'll have a keyboard for much longer because the network will begin to understand voice, and there'll be translations. There'll be free translations from language to language, connections, all kinds of various uh, communications, video, audio, telephone, photo, between devices and printing. It will all be simply like a person wants. That's how it will happen. All the options will be before him. 
The question is, what is this network good at at the end of the day? Good for. It's good for. I hope that very quickly we'll begin to think and feel that we don't want it. Just like that. We don't want it. We want to be connected in, an, in a genuine inner connection, internet, which connects our hearts and minds together. That's the inter. That's really the inter part. And it's still an extranet at the moment. It's remaining until we truly, humanity will begin to feel that the global, our global development, the global network connecting us, not this fake internet, the, the network between us, nature, is obligating us to get into a more internal connection where there's no lying, there's a, a direct connection between all the brains and hearts where people are connected to a single image of man. We will feel that we must have it. We, we, are, we need it. Two days ago, there was a problem here with the phones in half the country. People went crazy. And truly, they didn't know what to buy because he couldn't call his wife on the way home from work to the supermarket. The other one doesn't know which medicine. There were many things went wrong. We're not aware how much on a daily basis and at every moment. It's truly, we really need this connection. So we will reach a state where will feel we don't need a device. I don't need to write. I don't need to read. I need to feel everyone that they are connected to me in a direct manner without any modems and without uh, looking for some frequency, without connecting through some frequency, but just directly, and that's it. A limitless pipe between everyone. Our evolutionary development when it develops in us a deficiency like that, it will bring us truly to changes, genuine changes. And then we will need to develop a network of connection between us where you cannot lie, like on the internet. And there, everyone will be connected to everyone and not in an artificial manner where everyone's hiding behind the screen and doesn't want to show himself. This helps us be even more anonymous than before, but surely we will reach a state where we will cancel all the media and transition to our genuine uh, connection as one man with one heart. That's in brief, but the subject is so wide. It's so wide, you can talk a lot about it. So you see this process of development of the internet that you describe it like some world of opposites, lying and truth and connection, disconnection, revelation and hidden, that there's uh, two opposites. It shows us all of nature, all of man's nature. We can see lies, uh, censorship, and they turn it off, and they how much how hypocritical people are, and everything's there. I don't see it. If we today can give it give it a mark altogether then I would give it a minus. Because at the end of the day, there's a lot of lying from the newspapers and TV and everything that's there, clips and a lot of hypocrisy, a lot of intentional lying, all kinds of sales and 
And what else is there? They're ruining little kids. I'm not against sex or things that are in man's nature, but it has to be in a more respectable way and for certain ages and not in a manner that with for kids that it makes them crazy, their whole imagination that it disconnects a child from life. He's there all the time to see all kinds of pictures and he's always uh, diving into that. We know that there's periods when a child is young where he needs to grow and learn and develop. There's some that are completely sunk into that and they can't get out of it. The internet is as usual, just like the general nature of humanity is actually is being used for the incorrect inclinations of humanity. Uh, plus, they're just selling everything. They're lying about everything. I think that, of course, people that want to get benefit out of the internet through all kinds of encyclopedias and newspapers, of course, they can do that. But the fact that it encourages so much garbage, all the other garbage, bad inclinations in all of us, this usage is really corrupts humanity. It would be much easier for us. It would be much easier for us to reach the correction of man. And now, because of the internet, we will do it, but it will be a much greater path, a much longer path, until we recognize the evil in it. And more and more. It allows if the printed newspaper that, 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 we, that is printed for us, if it couldn't hold up, there are millions of copies of all kinds of newspapers, news items. It doesn't cost money to advertise any rubbish there, any lie. But in this manner, if the regular newspaper, the regular newspaper wouldn't be allowed to maintain itself like that. The internet continues the lie, it allows it to exist. And encourages all man's evil inclinations. The question is, of course, there's no other way to recognize the evil in us. The question is, to what extent will we be delving into this, and when will we begin to get out of it? This is a way, this is the path of suffering, not a good path, because we will not be able, according to our nature, to get out of this lie, prostitution, all this garbage, viruses that are there, but only through the great crisis in finances. The great financial economic crisis, because in a process, in the uh, in our priority set, there's food, sex, and everything else, and then this whole lie is mainly around sex. It's not just sex itself, it's all the lies and, and using one another in all kinds of ways. And before that, there's food. So I'm afraid that if we don't begin recognizing the evil in the connection between us, which the internet will help us reveal to the extent that we're in the wrong connection between us. If we don't begin this, 
כאוכל מן משפחה, כן? מזון מן משפחה. Then we'll come to hunger, the blow of hunger, and that will disconnect us slightly, <coughs> will shake us up a little bit, and obligate us to deal with changing the connection between us. If you could explain slightly more, if you can open it up, I'm not sure I understood it. The, you said food, sex, family. Food is the main thing, and after food, you have sex. So therefore, if we're deep into the internet, lies, porno, and it gets all kinds of formats there and we can't get out of it to raise us to a higher degree they will need to push us to a previous stage which is food if we will not be able to attract people slightly higher to recognizing the evil in this network to direction to be connected in a good manner between us, which is what nature is obligating us to do. Then the blows will come from nature, uh, from the side of uh, hunger. I didn't really understand up till now. What's exactly wrong with the internet? You're saying you, there's no good without bad and no bad without good. The bad part of it is that it, let's say you have little kids, yes. Do you want them to go onto the internet? God forbid. I have a filter on the internet. So you explain. I, my kids are, my youngest daughter is 30 years old. So, but my grandchildren are on the way. And I'm like you, I don't want them to be wandering around this whole field full of uh, bad things, traps, just like you let them go walk around a town. They can go to the safari, but not to this nightclub. Why don't you allow them to wander around the world uh, their whole life? Let them get to know everything. Let them go in. See, this is life. But rather, but you know, but they can go in and not come back out. Yes. It's not a matter of if a person goes in and sees and knows this is me, and that's a form that I need to verify. It's, it, I need to criticize. I'm able to rise above my nature that's attracting me like an animal, and I can be above it and look like a man and uh, and uh, disregard it. I can't, so I'd rather block it off. I am attracted to a lower degree and I pull I pull all of humanity after me because we're all connected in one network. So the internet has to be very classified. Uh, divided into different levels. You always have to know who's going into what and for what. The device has to identify that if it's Mr. Oren, he can go into this and this, these types of sites, and these not. Because even Mr. Orwin has a limit that above that God knows what, what he can get dragged into. And his kids, these kids, God forbid, not more than this. If we want each person to develop in a healthy manner that will be worthy, that will be good, that will be beneficial, for all of humanity because we're all connected together. 
I have an interest that all humans will not damage the world because it's also my world and I'm dependent on everyone. So we have to make sure that this device, in a biological manner, according to some biometric sense, it identifies who's using it, like a parent, and will direct us. Here is allowed, here it's not allowed, and this is like this, and this is like that. So he'll be really have a sense that will direct and escort a person using it in an educational, in a correct educational manner, then there's nothing to talk about, uh, of course, please. And then there'll be places that we completely clean them out, and there'll be places that we don't, that even that it's worth it, even though they're not that pretty, and but each and every one of us has thoughts and inclinations, that we don't want to even talk about them with ourselves, especially not with strangers. But let's say it depends at what level humanity is at, at what level humanity is at. And then in accordance with that, we gradually advance as well. In other words, I'm not saying that everything has to be sterile and Apart from uh, studying books for school until, until university, there shouldn't be anything else. No. If you don't, if you want to uh, wander around in nature, then you learn botanica. No. But but you have to have everything that belongs to the le our normal regular regular accepted level of life, and that also includes all kinds of most intimate things, but it depends for who. This device is not capable of escorting us in an educational manner throughout this network. He's not capable of being human. You see that you just block your kids off and you think it helps? I am not so sure. But there's no choice. I understand you. Therefore, this device is very problematic. You're opening up the big world to a little person. And it's very dangerous. It's very dangerous. I reached New York first time I was like 40 years old, I think, maybe less, 35. First of all, I saw people there, tourists. They wander around to all kinds of places. I saw how they were in shock. It was, their head is turning and something goes by. They could have done a lot of stupid things. You need to open like a kid is raised in the home. You give him toys that are suitable for certain ages. You check him with the doctor if he's developing correctly or not and mentally and everything you check if his IQ is developing does he know how to count to recognize identify colors all kinds of things and this is how we check and of course there's personal diversions here and there deviations but this is how we educate a person the internet doesn't give us this ability to do selection to verify for these, yes, for these now it's open, it's a, it's an open pipe. And no matter how much they say that you can filter things, also with the TV today, you have unlimited channels where 20 or 30 percent of them, of course I don't want my children to be exposed to, <clears throat> why not? 
because it's not suitable for their age. It's not suitable for their level of development. Now I'm going to ask you, why do you only look according to the age? Why don't you look according to the level of development, truly, not without age? I've seen ki people in my life, and until today I see that he can be 40, 50, 60 years old, and he's a child. And he's allowed to be, because he's already older. What's older? Smarter? Because he got older? Or what? The, the world belongs to the uh, older people, and we don't know that they know how to do good with it. So I don't think that it has to be this verification has to be according to age or according to IQ. I'm also not sure because there's people that are very smart with all kinds of deviations. It also doesn't matter. So we have a very big problem opening up the big world to a person. Therefore, the Internet plays here two roles. On the one hand, it raises the person's ability to be connected to be filled with everything there is in the world, with all good. And along with that, to fill all his desires for fulfillment. And it's actually accelerating our development, but because of our nature, accelerating it in the path of suffering, through the path of suffering. Because it allows each person everything. If I'm in some village, in some little city, in some place where I'm working in some garage, I'm in a home and I have a nightclub next to my house, and my girlfriend, or I'm already married, etc. Very limited life. And at the same time, I have a, a world open before me, Hollywood, Jamaica, in all directions. It's, it really develops person quickly. But from the urges, from the lowest urges, and right up to where a person wants, the highest. It doesn't educate, doesn't bring us to good. It opens all the options before us. It accelerates the development of humanity through recognition of evil, through path of suffering, through which we will quickly, but through suffering, will develop. So to conclude, Good or bad? Of course it's good because this acceleration of the development of humanity that we received, that we acquired through this device is really incredible. In 20 years, what am I talking about 20? I built my site on the internet in 1992, 1993 maybe. It was one of the first in the country, in Israel. I used to sit with my student, with Ben Zion, and I would build a page, each page if you wanted to order it outside, it would cost $400. It was such handwork, manually you had to work on it for a few days, and there weren't experts. 
That's why they took so much money. We did it ourselves. And 20 years have gone by. And you can get whatever you want now. You don't need to call someone for something. You put it up by yourself automatically without asking anyone. In those days, there was a whole procedure you had to call. So what do I want to say? In 20 years, we've reached a state where the entire world feels itself in one network. People receive the ability to announce themselves, who we are, what we are, what we want. Nobody can shut them up. They can still come out and scream to everyone. And if those screams are correct, they can act correctly. And they have the ability to reach everyone. The internet gives you freedom. It breaks through borders. That's clear. It really accelerated our development. Everyone feels that they're living in the global world. It really advanced us. I'm in that network, whether I like it or not, with the people who hate me most, and with the net neutral people, the fascists, the socialists, anything you can think of. Really, truly without borders. It's like I'm in one room with all of humanity. And it helps. I think if it wasn't for this network, there would be a lot more wars and fights breaking out. There was a time when we used to have to break out in war to feel one another. To get in, to, to, to be in contact with each other. Today you do it through the internet. The world has become so round. People have started traveling around the world. I can order a pizza from Paris, for example. I live in between continents. <coughs> it erases borders. A person feels I um, can be here, not there. I don't really feel where exactly. It brings us closer to one nation, one country, to something cosmopol cosmopolitan. And prevents lots of problems in conflicts. I don't understand why, because we know each other better. You used to have to send to your country 100,000 agents for all different things to write who you are, what you are. Today, we're much more open to each other. Hollywood is one, pizza is one, McDonald's is one, Coca-Cola is one. We're all wearing what's coming from China. We're all using what's coming from uh, Europe and America. The common market. The, the thing that controls us are the international banks, the international societies. They don't care about borders. American society is in Africa, in India, even in Siberia. Now China is opening things in Africa, it's opening factories in Africa. 
It's no longer worth it to get into wars. I can't. If I penetrate a few countries, I don't want them to be in war because I'm in my banks and my chains and my business with everyone. I don't want them to start uh, quarreling. I need them to work and bring me filling that they'll bring profit. And who controls the world? Only those big guys. 20 or 20 of the big guys in the world, they control everything. They will tell you whether to start a war or not. Do you think it's the world leaders that we know, Obama and all, Putin and those guys? It's clear that it's not them. It's um, whoever operates the banks. The Internet is also an, uh, a global network like international commerce, international industry. It helps to connect everyone to a single body, and in that prevents conflict. If we're connected in some manner, even close but distant, it's all close but distant. It's already a problem. We're connected, we're dependent on each other. It's, uh, we're not even capable of taking it into account. If I want to be against you, but you're with him and they're with him, and, the, and then I see I can't. I have a, a dozens of other connections with you, so I don't know what to do. We see with Iran, with everyone. Anything that you want to do against someone else, at the end of the day, in a roundabout way, it'll come back to you. We see that this genuine network that connects us together obligates us to climb down a bit from, from uh, arranging ourselves forcibly, organizing things uh, by force. The internet explains who we are and it brings us closer together. And also, we need to understand the fact that you are presenting yourself as a country in a revealed, naked manner in front of everyone. It prevents prevents you from going wild. If I'm a dictator and I want to do what I feel like doing in my country, once upon a time I used to do what I felt like and I would close everything down. But today you can't be isolated. Today you have satellites filming you. There's radar hearing what's happening there. There's all kinds of cameras, whatever you want. All kinds of things. You cannot allow yourself to do what you feel like doing. It's all through a network that connects us. But again, I'm saying, at the end of the day, I truly hope that soon we will reach a state where we will need a genuine network, that we will all feel ourselves that we exist without any modem, or or strings between us. I feel in this whole discussion that everything that we put our finger on, it, there's one thing and the opposite. Everything has a side like this and exactly an opposite side. For example, like the opposition, the contrast that I recognized here that you said you expect the network, the internet network to bring us 
quicker to realizing the bad connections between us, how we're disconnected from one another. You know, if you think about these things, the network connects us, and you're talking about disconnection. You're saying, I expect the internet to accelerate our ability to discern that the connections between us are bad, that we're disconnected. So is it a network or is it disconnection? How are these two opposite things? How do you identify them in one object? If once upon a time we would connect by phone to one another and invite each other over, meet in some coffee shop in the center of town once a month, we used to come there, sit down, hang out for a few hours together. Today there's no such thing. First of all, there's no time. Second of all, why do I need to see you in a coffee shop or on Skype we see each other? Even though we live uh, next to one another and we call each other for free. So I don't know, need a coffee shop or anything. There's no personal connection between us. There's no heartfelt uh, human connection, but rather everything is barely what's happening. Uh, I don't even say, how are you? I just look at you like this. I send you like a smiley or something, and that's it. And it's enough. You already know what's happening with me. Everything's fine. I sent you some picture, and that's it. We're starting to talk to each other in these little icons, in these little symbols, and that's it. It's instead of what we used to say, we used to talk, do something. Today, we're, we're more and more closed off. We used to go with our family to go out to the park or the city. Today, you order a pizza, you sit in front of the TV, eat the pizza, Coke, drink the Coke, the kids are happy, you're happy, and everything's all nice, calm, and quiet. Everything's becoming more and more closed. If you have an external connection, such a good one with everyone, first of all, you have to go. It's far, it's expensive. It's more, it's easier to just stay home. We see people take everything home. They want everything to be in their home. A little bit of sport. Sports, uh, they have TV, they have internet. All the various appliances in the house. The kitchen, that's it. They don't need anything apart from that. I'm set. If I have to go to work, fine. Today, also a lot of work. We'll see in the coming years. Everything will come home. Why do I need to leave the house? If in the next stage of human development, apart from actual factories, everything else is clerks, logistics, services, virtual services, let's say. What do I need to, I also as the boss, what do I need, workplaces, all kinds of things. Let them work from home and that's it. They send their work, they do what they have to do at home. I send them to their bank account, their salary and that's it. We don't see one another, what for? It all becomes, this network becomes, starts to enslave us. It begins to be the network of connection between people in a factory, in a business. It goes into the company. If before we would connect between us as humans, today we don't need that. I'm a boss. As a boss, I have, I know in our factory, there's tons of people that work throughout the world voluntarily and not, and it's all done th through the internet. And that's how everything gets done. Universities, everything's transitioning to, I'm sure schools are more and more becoming like that as well, just for the tiny ages, actually, say up to grade five or six. 
but afterwards at home, all kinds of forms like that. It will have people will close off more and more inside their homes. A person wants to live in their home. That is the trend. Not good or bad, that's the trend. But we're always developing. And what's developing in us is not just our ego, but already the integral ego that I have to, like now I, re I must be connected to the whole world through the virtual network and not more, and not less. I want to have all the options. Then I'll feel this virtual network does not allow me to provide what I want. I want to feel. I want to feel humans more. It's enough for me to feel, to feel them as some kind of plastic in an artificial manner. I have to feel them more. There's times when people break out and they can't remain behind the computer screen and there will be lots of problems and diseases because of this uh, closed off uh, isolation and people will need to they'll require a new connection the genuine internet inner network be between them. And that's already the next stage, the level of man. We can see the internet web as like a springboard to the corrected world that is helping us to understand the connection that we want to have, all its problems, what's missing, to reach a complete connection, full connection. And what do we get out of it? In the current web, we only get very dirty life, but it's common in somehow. Among all the data that we have that this internet gives us, we will begin to feel what the ideal network should be like, that the, the complete network could be in which it's truly worth it for us to live. The internet of today is a springboard to a connection between the hearts of tomorrow. Can I, when you gave this description, suddenly I understood the difference between there's the network and there's the people, the people that use the network. So it's like the network has turned us into a global village, but the users are not global yet. Truly, there's like a lack of um, matching between the network and people who are using it. I think we should talk about that in the future. Yes, we can. We would continue, but our time is up. I want to thank you, Rev Lightman. I would make a sentence to conclude is that the Internet of today is a springboard to the connection between the hearts of tomorrow. We can talk about it. There's books, really heavy books about the Internet, very big books. All the criticism and research, it's a very, very special phenomenon. It's the conclusion of all the development of a person up till now and the opening to tomorrow. Nitsa, how would you like to conclude? I think the last sentence that you just said, that the network is actually the conclusion of all the evolutionary development we went through until today. Okay, thank you very, very much, Rav Lightman. Thank you, Nitsa Mazos. Thank you for being with us. Until next time, all the best and so long.